Hello submarine friends, as promised, today Anthony and I are making a video showing the interior of the submarine. A lot of people ask me if I'll show them the inside of the submarine. I would be curious as well. So let's go inside and have a look. Okay, we're inside the submarine. So I'm just going to go over what each item does. So the first item is right here. This is my handy dandy toolbox. I actually just put this in. It's just fantastic. It's just a simple box you buy on Amazon, but it's really handy to have. Just keeps things organized. This right here, this is the controls for the uh, electric manipulator outside. And it just sits here all the time out of the way, but I can put it on my lap to use it. That's my camera or my cell phone camera in the window right there on a magnetic bracket. And right here is the altimeter. And I use that to maintain or to observe the internal pressure. You have to keep it at the same pressure all the time inside. That's what tells you if your life support system is working properly. Uh, just another camera bracket. This right here is the backup altimeter. So it's just redundancy. Moving over here, my handy dandy flashlight. Now this guy right here, this is actually my communications to the surface. I just took a diver unit that's out of a diver's mask and I put it in this project box. So I just push to talk right here. Or I can set the communications so it automatically uh, pushes to talk, so to speak. But I think the internal scrubber might be too noisy for that to work. Just an oxygen alarm that you would find in a mine and that sort of thing. This right here is a vent valve. That makes the sub sink or surface. Now coming along here, that's the electric, uh, the electric switches to turn on all the functions. And moving down here, this is just a gauge I put on for now. I have to get a better gauge, but I'm just waiting to find a better gauge. This tells me the outside water pressure. In other words, the depth. This valve right here, this is a 6,000 PSI valve. That sends air to the uh, air compensation system for the motors and the uh, electric arm. Right down here, this is a stainless steel rod assembly that I just put in this winter. And when I rotate this, that's what releases the arm so it falls off the submarine in the event of uh, entanglement. This is the speaker for the communications. And moving around, this right here is the controls for the actual submarine. This is how I steer the submarine and up and down and forward and backward and turn and everything. Um, it just sits here, but it sits on my lap when I'm using the sub. Right here we have emergency breathing. So if there's smoke inside the submarine, I have an air source from outside that I can breathe. And moving along, this reduces the pressure from the main tank anywhere from two to 3,000 PSI. And I usually run 800 to 1,000 PSI in the sub. This guy here activates the emergency breathing. This is the shutoff valve, another 6,000 PSI valve. This guy here shuts off the air from the main tank to the submarine. And then moving around, right here, those flashing lights are all the speed controls. That's for the uh, electric arm and for the thrusters. This one here is dedicated. It's just for the, um, the wrist, uh, battery shutoff, uh, voltage, uh, voltage meters. And then there's the hand pump, this yellow guy. That's the hand pump that releases the uh, drop weight or the spool and float for an emergency uh, towing me off the bottom of the lake, I guess you could say. Here's the, the valve. So when I rotate this valve this way, the spool releases. When I rotate the valve that way, then the float releases. So this right here is a backup scrubber. So if I lose all electricity in the submarine, I just pull a plug out of the bottom of this guy. You can see it's just made out of plumbing parts, but it really works well. And it's full of CO2 absorbent enough so I can get to the surface or deal with the scrubber or figure out what's going on. This is an air supply. It's a backup air supply for a few different functions. These are internal oxygen tanks. And that's what I breathe when I'm on a regular dive. So right there is the CO2 scrubber. And that's what uh, takes the CO2 out of the atmosphere in here. And right here is the O2 bleed valve. So I just set it to almost half a liter per minute. I've actually, I'm actually less than half a liter per minute. 
and this right here is the CO2 meter. So we're at 2238 parts per million and rising because the scrubber's not on. And right below it is the sonar unit for telling me the depth before I dive. Uh, just another project box that I use as a junction box. These two valves right here, this is what makes the submarine surface. So I turn this valve, sends air to the aft ballast tanks, turn this forward ballast tanks. Little storage tray just for little bits and pieces. And then there's my handy dandy crescent wrench. I always have to carry my crescent wrench. And then there's my new flood valve. I actually just put this in. It's a one inch stainless steel 1000 PSI valve. That's for flooding the submarine in the event that I have to escape. Obviously I can only do that to certain depths and not even that deep because I'm not a Navy SEAL, what can I say? So that was the inside of the submarine. One thing I didn't mention while I was in there is I actually have a 72 hour reserve of oxygen and CO2 absorbent. So that makes up the life support system. So underneath the seat is a, a quantity of CO2 absorbent. And then on the outside of the submarine is an additional oxygen supply. I never ever expect to use it. I just plan to use the small tanks inside. It just makes it easier for filling for in between dives rather than trying to top up a big tank each time. Ciao for now.